Hello everyone and welcome to Gaussian basis model explained for beginners. I'm your instructor Kashif Murtaza from AI Sciences and in this video we are going to talk about a basis model which is very very famous in machine learning known as a Gaussian basis model and also sometimes is known as radial basis model. So in particular what we are going to do is we are going to see what is a Gaussian basis function and how this uh, model can be used as a feature extractor. So using this model we can we can reduce the dimensionality of our data and we can increase the dimensionality of our data. Uh, so in both cases it can be used as feature extractor. We will also see a relationship of k-means clustering algorithm with Gaussian basis model and finally we will wrap up our video uh, by implementing this Gaussian basis model in uh, scikit-learn with a uh, in in a regression task. So um, if you are new to our channel uh, at AI Sciences we actually deliver a lot of artificial intelligence and data science consultancies uh, services including courses, books, um, codes and software and everything that is required um, uh, both as a product and as an in-demand um, kind of services. Uh, and um, if you are a regular viewer of our channel, then uh, be ready for another fascinating video um, on the from the platform of uh, AI Sciences. So um, let's start. <laughs> So first of all, uh, let's see what is a Gaussian basis function. Uh, don't worry about this very horrible uh, kind of equation, maybe a horrible looking kind of equation, don't worry about that. So think about um, data that is given to you, some data, maybe for classification, maybe for regression, or maybe it's, it's some kind of um, data for some unsupervised learning task. So let's say this is some feature value, let's say two, this is minus four, seven, and dot, 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 let's say different values, let's say 11.3. Um, and that's one feature vector. And may you, maybe you have another feature vector, another feature vector. Let's focus on just one feature vector, x. And maybe uh, if this data point belongs to some supervised learning task, then it has a pair value y as well, which is known as target. But let's just focus on this x, which has a lot of uh, features. So this feature, first feature value is two, second feature value is minus four and so on. And let's say it has uh, so many features, let's say 100 features. So in this case, this x is a 100 dimensional vector. Um, so this x is basically 100 by one vector. And the CI um, is a parameter of the model, is also a same dimensional vector of real values. So if you, if you just focus on this formula inside, what happens is x minus CI, it actually gives finally a resultant vector, which is um, the resultant vector. Let me call the resultant vector as um, maybe P, uh, I, maybe, or, or simply p. That p vector is also 100 by 1. And then I compute its uh, norm, n squared. Uh, one can use any norm, but let me uh, stay simple and keep using the norm as a Euclidean norm, which means all the squares of the elements of p, the vector p, and then, um, then just add them up. Uh, so that is the norm, and that is the square of the norm. So finally, this method will finally give me eventually a real number. So e raised to the power some real number like um, 6.4, that's a real number, that's it. Uh, maybe some other real number and so on. So e raised to the power minus that is again some positive real number. Um, yeah, it's a positive real number, it's always positive, regardless of the Regardless of this value, this is always positive. So what happens is, uh, given a vector, and um, for, for a given vector x, 
assume that we know a particular vector ci, then the Gaussian function on this particular vector results a real number, a positive real number. Um, and changing these c values um, will get different functions. For example, if ci is a particular vector, if ci is a particular vector, then that's one Gaussian function. If ci is a different vector, if you choose ci differently, then that's a different uh, Gaussian function and so on. Um, theoretically, these functions actually, they form um, an orthogonal basis of some function space, um, and that function space typically is infinite dimensional. And what happens theoretically is, in this particular case, what happens is this x vector is mapped to uh, an infinite dimensional space, and this ci vector, which also has just 100 features, it is mapped to an infinite dimensional space. And in that particular space, um, the two vectors um, happen to get their dot product, and the dot product real value is returned um, afterwards. So um, this is also known as Gaussian kernel uh, or radial kernel, radial basis kernel, uh, RBF kernel. Uh, it has a lot of applications in case, um, in case when the data is not linearly separable and it is required to, to uplift the data in some higher dimensional space to, to separate the data. Um, one way to do that is to apply this kind of kernel or, or function. But without actually using the kernel trick, it is, uh, it is useful alone as well. Uh, we will see uh, in, in the next slide how can we use this particular function, which is known as Gaussian function, um, to, to extract features from the data or to compute features from the data or uh, to, to increase or decrease the dimensionality of the data or to prepare the data to extract the, extract the data, extract the features for, for classification or for regression task. So let's see. Um, so um, if, you, if you, for example, focus here, um, consider uh, this x as a vector, um, let's say some d-dimensional vector, let's say 100. I, I have not told you where these ci comes from, but just hold on. Think this ci is some vector of 100 numbers, um, 100 because this is 100. Um, Otherwise, whatever the dimensionality of your data is, that's the dimensionality of your vector C. Um, so think that's, that's a vector of 100 numbers in, in the current scenario, uh, wherever it comes from. And then uh, this ZI is basically one real number. So um, if X has 100 dimensions and CI has also 100 dimensions, then this particular result will give one real number. Now think of uh, several vectors ci, that's a c1 as a 100 by one vector, c2 as a 100 by one vector, and think c3 as a 100 by one vector. In that case, uh, we can compute z1, which is e raised to the power uh, norm square, x, which is 100 dimensional minus c1 whole square, we can compute z2, which is e raised to the power minus x minus c2, whole square. And we can compute z3, which again similarly looks like the following. Now theoretically, these three functions, c1, c2, parameterized by c1, c2, and c3, they form, a, these three are the basis functions, Gaussian basis functions. But uh, eventually, practically, what happens is this c1 is a real number, z2 is a real number, z3 is a real number. And what happened is you mapped your data from a 100-dimensional space, uh, originally having 100 numbers, to just these three numbers. And that's why you can use the Gaussian basis function um, to, to extract the features. Uh, not only that, you may have your uh, number of um, number of parameter vectors more than uh, more than 100, let's say, you keep on moving, you have a C4, C5, and let's say you have C1000. Maybe you have 1000 um, parameters or 1000 basis functions. In that case, your original data will be 100 dimensional, but your mapped data will be 1000 dimensional because 
this particular vector will go through with each C, CI and will eventually give a thousand numbers. Originally it was having a hundred numbers, but now it has uh, a thousand numbers. So in that case, um, you can use this Gaussian basis model or Gaussian basis functions as a feature extractor as well. Now, there is a relationship of k-means with a Gaussian basis model. So far, I have not told you how to or where, from where these c vectors they come from. There are several ways to compute these c vectors. First, uh, first and the most simple way is to keep the c vector, like uh, simply the c1 as your data point x1, and c2 as your data point x2, and so on. So you have cn, and if you have n data points, whether that's a supervised learning task or unsupervised learning task, one way is to just compute each C1 from the given data, just like so. Another way is to compute representative points. For example, let's say this is x1, this is x2, and so on. This is, let's say, uh, xn. And the column vectors are really the data points. And maybe you want to come up with, let's say, only five representative vectors, uh, which means C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. One way to do that is to get five representative points is to apply k-means clustering on this data set and choose the number of clusters as five, and then choose, finally, the centroids of the clustering result as C vectors. And then just by applying the same five, in, in this particular case, five Gaussian basis functions, you can change the dimensionality of your data from 100 to five in this case. But don't think that this dimensionality reduction um, is, 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 like, is, like, is like the way ordinary dimensionality reduction is happening. Uh, you can think of this as feature extraction and not dimensionality reduction. The reason is, first, the dimensionality of the data is made very high to infinite dimensional space, and then a dot product returns. So, um, I mean, it may, be, it may be not very wise to call it as a dimensionality reduction technique, rather um, a feature extraction technique where the number of features depends upon the number of clusters initially you have. Um, now, uh, I really want to um, set a way, how can we find out the, um, the classifier, the classifier or regression tasks? How can we formulate the classification or regression tasks in this way? Well, um, you can think of this Gaussian basis functions just as feature extractor and converting your data uh, from X to Z. So that's completely a different space. Once your data is converted to different space, now you're free to choose any regression model. You're free, free to choose any classification model. So you can simply think this Gaussian basis functions are just converting your original data to a new data set uh, with maybe a longer dimension or maybe a smaller dimension. But um, uh, it, it, is, it, it can be thought of just as a data transformer. And once you have transformed your data, uh, afterwards, uh, whatever classification scheme you are going to come up with, whatever classification or regression technique you are going to come up with, or maybe if you're going to apply some unsupervised learning task, your data is just this, you can, you can think of this process, whole process, as just the data pre-processing or just extracting the features. Um, although in so many cases, in several cases, particularly in support vector machines, uh, these kind of Gaussian basis functions, uh, also called there as kernels, they are very, very, very popular to learn nonlinear boundaries. Uh, I know this is a lot of theoretical stuff, um, but I will, um, I will encourage you if you're not uh, following everything, uh, because these are a lot of terms and maybe the video has gone uh, in a lot of abstract ways. Um, if you are not following each and everything, uh, I will recommend you to take our course, full course on support vector machines, um, as well as on on machine learning. Um, if you if you follow the links uh, in the description in the given uh, description below, uh, you can you can follow you can go towards the links towards the course on complete support vector machines, which used which actually uses uh, a lot uh, these Gaussian basis 
uh, functions. Uh, basically, there we call it as uh, RBF kernel or Gaussian kernel. Um, but the idea is much like the same as uh, as in this video. Um, let's uh, let's also see some of um, some some hands on in 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 Python and see how can we use this model uh, for regression or for classification. So let's see. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm um, importing an RBF sampler, this radial basis function sampler, or you can call it as a Gaussian basis function sampler. Um, I'm uh, importing um, regression data, load boson, uh, and finally I'll be applying a linear regression on that. Um, I'll be using train test split for evaluation. The metric I'll be using will be mean squared error, and NumPy is one way or the other, somewhere inside is required, or maybe required. So um, if, you, if you're not familiar with, with regression tasks or with classification or evaluation and all, this take, and all these things, I strongly recommend you to go uh, and take our course, full course on, on introduction to machine learning in Python. So um, let's dive in. Um, and now uh, I will get the data, get data, and I will split the data where the 20% of the data will be kept as test data for evaluation and 80% of the data as will be used for training. If you now see the shape of uh, data, we have 404 points for training and the original dimensionality of the data is 13. So basically we have 13 features. And what we can do here is we can um, have an RBF sampler and this n components is basically the total number of basis functions. Or you can think of the total number of C vectors, starting from C1, C2, C3, and so on. And these C vectors are not necessarily computed by uh, k-means or not necessarily are the data points. There are several ways to set these functions. Um, so at the end of the day, we have 10 functions, which means our data will be converted from 13 dimensions to 10 dimensions. We can set this to 100 as well, which means the data will be uh, will be converted from 13 dimensions to 100 dimensions. So uh, after that, we will um, we will apply this transformation on our test data as well as on our training data. So now you can see the shape of X train. So that is 404 by 10. Similarly, the, the shape of X test is also, I mean, the, the dimensions are 10, the number of points are different. So after that, let's apply the linear regression model. By the way, so far we have just converted the features to, we've just transformed the features, um, and effectively what happens is dimensionality is just changed. And from here onwards, you can apply any machine learning algorithm that you are going, that you might be willing to apply on the original data. Um, so, for example, linear regression. Let me apply linear regression on that, and let me uh, get the predictions, and let me compute the mean squared error. By the way, uh, the goal here is not to get a very good accuracy or mean squared error. The goal is here to uh, to go through with you this RBF sampler. In several cases, it is very, very, very powerful and. Uh, very effective. So um, um, th that's a, that's a kind of very quick walkthrough over Gaussian basis models, also known as radial basis models. Uh, it become a model when you it becomes a model when you actually build a, a full classifier on it, and it becomes one part of the pipeline. Otherwise, they remain as separate basis functions. So um, I hope you have liked our content. If so, please press the like button and uh, subscribe our channel and share this uh, cool video with your friends. Uh, yeah, hope to see you next time.